Welcome. I'm Bry the Builder, and in this video, I'm going to be building this amazing model kit from Tamiya, the Ford GT. I've been in love with this car for a really long time. Um, I started out on Ford's website, the Ford GT Configurator, and I went through a bunch of different paint schemes as well as wheel options, brake options, interior color options, and I've come down to this. Uh, I really love the blue. Uh, the Tamiya version is mica blue, and it looks to me like a really close match. So I'll be painting it the blue body color. I'm not doing any rally stripes. I just don't really like how they look on this car. Uh, if I suppose I was doing one of the other paint schemes, like the black with the dark gray stripes might be really cool, but there's something about the blue that I just really love. So I'm going to contrast that with the orange brakes and the orange interior detailing as well as the graphite wheels with the black lugs. My plan also will be to include um, four LEDs for the headlights. The upper and lower light will both get their own LED as well as doing LEDs in the taillights. While the blue mica um, is drying on the body panels, I'm going to do a little bit of the photo etch. I have already test fit and everything should be perfect. Um, I did widen the holes on the back here just a little. Um, and I already tested the LEDs to make sure everything was happy. And I think this one's gonna go like this. There's a little notch in the taillight part but at this point the heat shrink I put on there is a little fat so we just gotta work it in slowly all right those should look really cool all right that's pretty awesome Pretty much no light leak on the back. Completely no light leak on the back. All right, that should be just about as good as that can be. All right, now the rear section has four attachment points.
All right, so you can probably tell that these couple little headlight parts here have already been painted. Um, it's actually Citadel Ironbreaker, and based on the directions, it should be Tamiya Titanium Silver. But since I don't have titanium silver, um, the Iron Breaker seems like a very good compromise. So then this line on a couple of the pieces just needs to be filled in with semi-gloss black. So I have it thinned pretty well so it flows nicely. And then just a little touch up around the edge. Now, to assemble one of the actual headlight interiors, we're going to go with, what is this, the right side, I think. I think. Doesn't really matter, but um, the parts are kind of oddly organized on the sprue, so make sure you're watching which ones you're grabbing. kind of insanely small but it's there <laughs> so there you go so it's there there's a super tiny GT logo right there after a bunch of cutting sanding uh, and gluing my fingers together several times I actually have what I believe is a very nice connection between the photo etch and the original piece so not that it could take a lot of abuse right the super glue connection is still really tiny and essentially pretty brittle um, but I don't think I clogged any of the holes 
on the photo etch is just slightly offset between the two pieces, but I think once it's painted, I don't think you'll ever notice that. That turned out, I think, really, really well. So that should be a much cooler, cleaner front end than having those holes all filled solid. So now that's just gotta get painted and I'll be back with some more parts. I did already start by going over the entire body here with a pretty fine sanding stick, right? 3200 grit. Um, and I'm just taking down the orange peel. It is time to put these four uh, nano cool white LEDs um, from Evan Designs. So nano there, the nano size, I don't know exactly what the millimeter dimensions are offhand, but they're tiny. So I'm going to start with essentially just putting a bit of super glue kind of at the bottom edge here. And what that'll do, hopefully, is just kind of grab the wire itself. Because at least to start with, the challenge, especially on camera here, so the yellow side is the side there that the light comes from. And I want to try to hold that as close to in the center of this opening as I can. And then I'm going to have to go back and kind of goo it up with a bit more super glue around it to make sure that it's actually held in place pretty solidly. Alright, so after a bit of messing around, both LEDs on the back of those headlights, that's really kind of great. Um, they're pretty well centered, and I mean, there's going to need to be a little light blocking back there, obviously, but um, with a little bit of zip kicker and a little bit of extra super glue, they're locked in there really nicely. So now, just a little bit of light blocking back there, and everything's gonna be pretty nice. That's pretty cool. All right, now to attempt to do a little bit of kind of fill uh, and light blocking, I'm going to try a little bit of white UV resin and we'll see i have not attempted to do something quite like this this way before so as an experiment i'm just going to put a little bit on then hit it with the uv flashlight and i cleaned the inside of the headlight glass thoroughly before installing the headlights here. 
So hopefully there are no fingerprints of any kind sitting in there. have dried a bit. I'm applying a layer of Microsol. of the front suspension installed here. We have the ability to steer. All right, and if I can hopefully have it focus. All right, the brakes uh, have some nice scratches in them. All right, so we have the nice Brembo decal on there. Some nice scratches. Looks like real brakes. 
One of the major kind of parts of the photo etch set is to replace all of these fins with all of these fins. Um, so that is going to be a challenge, but essentially it's going to come down to really just clipping all of them off. And I am a little afraid that I'm not going to get all of the new ones set back exactly where I want. Um, but, well, it's, it's too late now. down and 10 more to go 11 more to go <laughs> yeah all right i will be back when they're all attached it actually went better than i thought it was going to after attempting to get the first one in place um after i got the first one set and gave it a little shot of zip kicker um surprisingly enough all the rest, or the next couple, attached really quickly and bonded almost instantly, even though I wiped the zip kicker off. So as I did each couple, I'd give it a shot of zip kicker, uh, and then the next couple would actually lock into place really nicely. Just a little recap. As I was painting these interior pieces, I kind of realized that it was gonna take like a thousand coats of orange so I started out um, with some Averland Sunset from Citadel and then had a nice kind of two or three layers base coat with that and then as I added the orange it covered far nicer and then I only needed another two or three coats of that. So all in all it was still a bunch of coats but the orange I think covered far better this way rather than just covering white. It would have just taken forever to just cover white with the orange. Orange is really thin. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead with some flat black and I'm gonna do the floor of the interior as well as the, I guess, seat centers. As you can see here in the close-up, I did add the photo etch to the top of the seat backs rather than the decal. And then spray painted everything with a nice satin black. Um, and I think that as far as the detail goes, just looks and feels a lot more like the actual seats that are in the car. Um, the seats in the car have kind of an embroidered, almost pressed in GT logo on the headrest. So I think that looks better. But, you know, either way, it's a done deal at this point. So I think it looks really good. Either way. Okay, it is time to take the piece of photo etch for the paddle shifters and actually replace the paddle shifters from the plastic. Um, the bend of these is going to be a little bit intricate so I have an actual photo etch bender uh, that you just kind of slip over and press nice and tight because there is kind of a, a seam on the photo etch where it's supposed to be bent but it doesn't have one right next to Kind of the center body that needs to be bent up right so as that bends away from kind of the steering wheel uh, there's a nice 
kind of like, I don't know, fold already in or a, a seam in the photo etch to be able to bend it back out. So the heavy kind of metal bender will definitely help make that feel a lot more like it's supposed to. And you can see, right, the photo etch, actually, the paddle shifters have a full cut all the way through the edges that looks so much more realistic. So, you know, for some things, photo etch is kind of a pain, but it really does add a level of detail and realism that you really almost can't get any other way. Alright, so checking out the interior here, there should actually be quite a bit more little detail on these kind of center console buttons. Um, there should be three of them have little white details and the one at the top closest to the big round button dial switch, whatever it is, is red. So like that then this button here probably the start button for the car is actually almost a transparent red so we'll see how to approach that but i think i'm gonna start with just a nice thin coat of white that really should end up puddling around the edges a little bit um and then when i get a coat of red over the top of it it should look like it's actually more of a transparent lit button the steering wheel also around all these little buttons all have little white number button details on them. I can't tell from any photos what any of it actually is, but there's a lot of detail that should be there. Same with the environmental controls next to what's the, the, on the dashboard. Um, there's little markings next to all three of those larger white knobs. Um, and then the three smaller buttons actually have little detail on them. So, with my super fine tiny brush here, I'm going to try and add as much of that detail as I can. So, basic assembly of the dashboard parts, right? Right here is where the larger orange piece will attach. Um, and then there's another piece that'll go, the other orange piece goes kind of down below it. I was, I was honestly surprised to find out how seamlessly all these pieces go together.
your upper section of the dash is installed and that nice little orange piece on the bottom is installed. And now it's time to get the steering wheel in place. So I'm gonna kind of goo this one up a little bit extra. Um, the steering wheel has a large kind of hiding spot um, where the glue will be that will be completely invisible. So we can put a little bit extra around it without worrying at all about it being visible. So that nice peg there slots in really nicely and seats in really well. So the whole dash, once it's all assembled, looks really good. Um, that orange really pops. I like how it kind of balances the blue. And on that interior, there's so much just solid black. Even though there's satin black and flat black, it's a lot of black. Um, the, the dash elements really do stand out nicely. And you can kind of see there all those little extra details around the environmental controls and on the steering wheel really do add the illusion of extra detail, right? It's nothing, it's just little dots of white, um, but it's, it's the perception that matters, and so it'll be perceived as actually being something. So hopefully, at least, it'll be perceived as being something rather than actually just little dots of white, but you know. I have managed to get the wiring from the headlights and from the taillights into at least, you know, unnoticeable locations on the interior of the car. It's, it's not beautiful, but you'll never see it again. So I've gotten everything wired up toward the back and now I'm just putting a little bit of um, um, soldering paste. It just helps the solder flow better. And when you're soldering anything that's this small, you want to use the finest point, at least from what I have done on research, you want to use the finest point that your soldering iron comes with, and you want to work with the lowest temperature you possibly can. So I have my soldering iron set at around 200 degrees, um, which is really as low as it goes. And it is a high enough temperature to melt the solder and actually get it to flow into the wires. Thanks for watching. This has been a really fun build. This is such a beautiful car in the real world. Um, I hope I did it justice at the small scale. It's not perfect, nothing I do is, uh, but it's really good and that's what really matters to me. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Please, please hit the like button. It definitely helps YouTube's analytics recommend my video to more people and it definitely helps the channel. So. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And hey, while you're at it, you might as well subscribe. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.